on one cold, cold morning, in the kingdom far, far away, there was a girl who was obsessed with puff pastry pies. Every day she was scrolling her social media feed, looking at puff pastry pithivia style pies, in hopes that one day she would be able to finally make a pie that's just as beautiful and delicious. But there were three unsurmountable obstacles that kept her from fulfilling her dream. One problem laid in time. Time was an essence to this girl. You see, in 2022 she had challenged herself to create and post cooking videos on her YouTube channel every single day. So, there was definitely not enough time to make a traditional homemade laminated puff pastry, which usually takes hours and hours of cooking. But one day, while researching for her daily cooking video, she found the solution. The solution was to make a quick puff pastry, also known as blitz puff pastry. The blitz puff pastry is something in between of regular laminated puff pastry and flaky dough. All you're gonna do is mix together bread and pastry flour in equal proportions. In a separate bowl, mix salt into ice-cold water in order to slow down the butter melting at the next stage. And unlike in flaky dough recipe, cut butter into large pieces. With flaky dough, we usually cut butter into hazelnut or pea-sized pieces. But since we want the puff pastry effect, cut large pieces for this dough. Then we'll transfer the butter into the flour mix. You can break it down a little bit with your fingers at this stage and add in the salted water. Start mixing with a silicone spatula inside the bowl. But as soon as the flour absorbs excess moisture, transfer everything onto the table and start working the dough. It is crucial not to overmix the dough at this stage. First of all, so you don't melt the butter with the heat that's coming from your hands. So for these purposes, actually, it might have been more wise to use the stand mixer. But, oh well. And second of all, because we still want the lamination to happen. So all that's required in this first step is to mix just enough so the dough forms. We'll have quite large pieces of butter sticking out, but that's totally fine for now. Relax. Put the dough in the fridge to cool down and rest for 20 minutes. Take it out, roll out in one direction, this is important, to about half an inch thickness, but really just follow your instincts. The dough will stop stretching itself actually. Hold the dough as per demo, wrap so it doesn't dry out and rest in the fridge again for 15 to 20 minutes. After, repeat exactly the same procedure. Roll it out again in one direction, only now the opposite one, from one open end to another open end, fold and rest. We'll do it one more time just before using it, so for now, that's it. Your quick puff pastry dough is ready, let's get back to the story. One problem found itself a resolution. But the girl was still facing two unsurmountable obstacles. The second obstacle was in the meat. You see, most of those beautiful, elegant pies that she liked to look at so much had several layers of fillings, and at least one of those layers was always meat. But she wasn't such a huge fan of red meat, therefore it seems like an impossible challenge to come up with a filling that would be just as worthwhile, appealing and structurally possible without involving any actual meat products. But once again, the principle of learning new recipes and cuisines while being true to the flavors that you like proved itself the only and ultimate truth. While she was learning how to make mooncakes for the very first time, the girl was struck with an idea of using a similar principle of filling making marrying it with a traditional pithivia creamy filling and incorporating a beloved Mediterranean element into it. The core of the pie filling must be an apple. So one could also call this pie apple dumpling. But I'd say it's a little bit more sophisticated than that and way more pleasant to look at. So for the apple, we're using the Granny Smith green apple variety. It holds the shape during baking and it's perfectly sweet and sour. Remove apple core by all means possible. I would not recommend to use cannoli mold as I do here. Use the special core remover tool. Funny story actually. 
I bought this cannoli molds two years ago. They have traveled with me across the ocean and I've never made cannoli with them. That's sad. I think I need to change that. Do you want the next video to be about cannolis? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, going back. So peel the apple, cut it in half and cover with lime juice to stop the oxidation and browning process. If you watch my Let Me Explain video series, you know why. You know the drill. Next, let's prep another layer of our filling that will protect our apple from overcooking and also give a nice nutty flavor to the whole dish. For this layer, I'm going to mix together almond flour, icing sugar, sesame paste, vegetable oil, rum, cornstarch, and green food colorant, just for fun. If you own a food processor, I'd highly recommend to use it for this mixing part. It'll be way less labor intensive and faster. So mix all the ingredients together and saute them on low heat in a non-stick pan, mainly to melt down the sugars. Cornstarch added to this almond filling mix absorbs all the extra moisture and once baked, it'll make the filling quite chewy and uniform, similar to a bean filling in mooncakes. And the third layer of our filling is the one that lays right in the middle and probably attracts most of the attention. And coincidentally, it's the easiest one to prep. So for this, we'll use my favorite feta cheese because apples, pastry and feta go amazingly well together. And a little bit of berry jam to make feta more sweet and colorful. Transfer feta mix into a piping bag and reserve for now. I hope you've already taken the puff pastry out of the fridge so it's not too cold since next we're going to roll it out for the last time. By the way, don't spare flour when rolling out the puff pastry and do also flip the sides often so it doesn't stick to your table. Then use two plates of different sizes to cut out two circles from the blitz puff pastry. One circle must be bigger than the other one. The smaller circle will go to the bottom, filling layers on top and covered by the bigger circle. Let the pastry circles chill in the fridge while we pre-assemble the filling layers. For that, I'm using a small bowl that I have that's perfectly round and will help me to shape a nice uniform outer layer for the pie filling. First goes a layer of green nutty almond paste that I just distribute across the bowl inner surface with my fingers. Second, I place the apple inside and then press the almond filling even tighter on the sides so it doesn't fall apart once out of the bowl. And thirdly and finally, I'll pipe the feta mix inside the core. Done. Now it's finally time for the pie assembly. First goes a smaller puff pastry circle. Second, we carefully place the pre-assembled filling. Remove any almond crumbs over the pastry sides with a brush. Then we'll distribute some egg wash on the sides of the pastry so once the top layer goes in place, it does actually stick to the bottom layer. Thirdly, carefully place the bigger puff pastry circle on top. Ensure that you don't stretch it at all and yet the pie is as smooth as possible. Optionally, you can also create some nice wavy patterns on the edges of the pie. Proper pastry professionals would of course have a special wavy cutter for this. I don't, as you can clearly see. So I improvise. Spend way more time on this than the cookie cutter would have taken me, but it works on a small scale. Finally, cover the pie with an egg wash and put in the fridge to chill. Butter and puff pastry must be as cold as possible before baking to achieve that iconic puff pastry look. In about 20 to 30 minutes, take the pie out and create some beautiful wavy patterns with a sharp blade or knife. Be sure not to cut in too deep so you don't cut the whole pastry layer. That would be fatal for the pie. One more egg wash and off to the oven it goes. Just before the pie is fully cooked, take it out of the oven and sprinkle some icing sugar on top and broil the pie for a little longer. This is a secret trick that many chefs use to create that glossy tanned look for the pies and pastries. Now, the puff pastry pie is fully cooked and ready to be cut into and devoured. But what is this pie? The girl was thinking. It's not an apple pie. It's not an apple dumpling. It's not really a regular pithivier. What is it? How to share this pie with your YouTube audience if there is no name to it? Are they going to like it? Are they even going to watch this cooking video if the name is wrong? This was the third and truly unsurmountable obstacle. <laughs> Thank you.
Tell me, guys, did I name this puff pastry pie correctly? Do you like my apple fat idea? Joyride. <laughs>